Engineering is an exact science. One false calculation and it's all over. Engines can fail, buildings can collapse, and bridges fall into the sea. These instances serve as reminders that even the most advanced and carefully planned projects can encounter unforeseen challenges, resulting in remarkable blunders and valuable lessons. Join me for today's video. We're going to count down the top 15 biggest engineering fails and mistakes. Starting with number 15, Arts Pedregal Collapse. Arts Pedregal was a shopping mall located in Mexico City, designed to cater to the wealthier residents of the city, mostly providing them with high-end boutiques. Its construction was completed in 2018, marking a welcome addition to the city skyline. However, this impressive architectural feat took a tragic turn on July 12, 2018, when a devastating structural failure led to the collapse of part of the mall. The collapse happened in the midst of a heavy rainstorm, which had been pounding Mexico City for several days. It was a heart-wrenching event that sent shockwaves through the community. The collapse was primarily attributed to a combination of factors. Weaknesses in the mall's design and construction became evident as it struggled to withstand the relentless rain. The shopping center's location on a hillside exacerbated this situation, as the saturated ground put immense pressure on the building's foundation. Reports also indicated that improper drainage systems and inadequate water management played a significant role in this disaster. The fateful moment of the collapse was captured on video, showing a dramatic scene where a large section of the mall's rooftop parking lot caved in. The force of the collapse sent debris crashing down onto vehicles and causing substantial damage to the lower levels. Thankfully, due to prompt evacuation efforts and a bit of luck, no lives were lost in this incident. Number 14. Nanchang Airport Nanchang Airport, located in the capital of Jiangxi Province in China, is a vital transportation hub for both domestic and international travel. The airport played a significant role in connecting this city to the rest of the world. It was a symbol of modernity and convenience for travelers, with its gleaming terminals and state-of-the-art facilities. That is, until it all came crumbling down. On August 4, 2019, tragedy struck Nanchang Airport, when a section of its newly built Terminal No. 2 suddenly collapsed. This collapse sent shockwaves throughout the city and beyond. Several factors contributed to this disaster. Investigations revealed that the construction quality of the terminal had been compromised with the use of substandard materials and shoddy workmanship. Adverse weather conditions combined with these construction flaws and it created a perfect storm that caused this collapse. The collapse of Terminal 2 was a terrifying and chaotic scene. Surveillance footage captured the moment when large sections of the building crumbled to the ground. Miraculously, the incident happened during a less crowded time and there were no fatalities reported. However, several people sustained injuries and the damage to the terminal was pretty extensive. Number 13. Skylab Skylab, the space station designed as an orbiting scientific laboratory, was a crucial step forward in space exploration during the 1970s. It served as a platform for studying the effects of prolonged weightlessness on the human body and conducting various experiments. NASA embarked on this ambitious project with great dedication. However, as the mission progressed, it became apparent that the agency hadn't made a sound plan to bringing it back down to Earth. Despite being designed for a short nine-year lifespan, Skylab lacked control or navigation mechanisms for a controlled descent. Why the lack of proper engineering? Well, NASA felt it would be too expensive. The absence of a clear plan became a pressing issue in late 1978 when it was discovered that Skylab's orbit was decaying. It weighed 77 tons and it had essentially become an uncontrolled spacefaring object. Faced with the prospect of an unpredictable crash on Earth, NASA found itself under increasing pressure from Congress and the public to ensure the safety of human lives. In response, NASA devised a plan to extend Skylab's operational life using the space shuttle. This plan involved boosting Skylab into a higher orbit, potentially extending its usefulness by five years before allowing it to become space debris. A lack of funding plagued Skylab again, and in 1979, engineers executed a series of booster rocket firings to initiate a controlled tumble. While much of Skylab fell into the ocean, some components ended up scattered across populated areas of Western Australia. Number 12. The Ford Pinto The Ford Pinto, a compact car from the 1970s, sadly made its mark as an engineering blunder that spiraled into a real-life tragedy-slash-comedy. At first glance, it was marked as an economical, budget-friendly ride, but beneath its unassuming exterior lay a fuel system design so flawed it would become the stuff of engineering legend, albeit for the wrong reasons. 
The Pinto's Achilles heel was its rear-mounted fuel tank. Now, that might sound like an odd choice for a fuel tank placement, but Ford went with it. The tank sat just behind the rear axle, with about as much protection as a circus clown riding a unicycle in a minefield. In even minor rear-end collisions, this setup was a recipe for disaster. The Pinto's engineering goof became glaringly apparent when a string of accidents resulted in the car going up in flames. The core problem wasn't just the tank placement, but also Ford's eyebrow-raising response. Internal documents revealed that Ford was fully aware of the explosive hazard posed by the Pinto, but decided to roll the dice and take a gamble. Instead of fixing the issue, they did some cost-benefit analysis, and it was cheaper to deal with injury and wrongful death claims than to redesign and upgrade their cars. A real what-were-they-thinking moment in the history of engineering decisions. Number 11. Tretton Bridge the collapse of the Tretten Bridge in Norway is yet another engineering failure that shakes the foundation of trust we place in the structures that we rely on every day. This 10-year-old timber and steel bridge situated in southern Norway crumbled unexpectedly while vehicles were in transit, leading to a heart-pounding rescue operation that exposed serious design flaws. It was a typical morning. Drivers are going about their business when suddenly the ground beneath them gives way. The Tretten Bridge plunged into the river below. A car found itself submerged while a truck teetered precariously on a section of the fallen structure. Incredibly, both drivers escaped unharmed. The collapse of this bridge raised significant questions about its design and its maintenance. This bridge was no ordinary structure. It was envisioned by the skilled architects at Planned Architecture, brought to life with engineering expertise from Norconsult, and constructed under the watchful eye of Contexto. It represented a fusion of form and function, an embodiment of architectural and engineering prowess. But the big problem here is the bridge was meant to last for a century, but collapsed after just 10 years. Number 10. Purity Distilling Company The Purity Distilling Company, once a thriving and successful business, experienced a traumatic downfall when it was closely tied to one of the most tragic events in American history, the Great Boston Molasses Flood of 1919. In the early 20th century, Purity Distilling Company, a subsidiary of the United States Industrial Alcohol Company, operated a molasses processing plant in Boston's North End. This plant was a key player in the production of industrial alcohol, which was used in various industries, including the manufacture of munitions during World War I. However, this profitable venture took a dark turn on January 15, 1919. On that fateful day, a massive 2.3 million gallon tank filled with molasses collapsed, unleashing a torrential wave of sticky syrup throughout the streets of Boston. The wave, estimated to be about 15 feet high, traveled at an astonishing 35 miles an hour. The result was catastrophic. Buildings were demolished, vehicles were swept away, and 21 lives were tragically lost in this disaster. The Great Molasses Flood, as it came to be known, remains one of the most peculiar and deadly industrial accidents in U.S. history. The subsequent investigation revealed that the tank's construction had been subpar, and the unseasonably warm weather had caused the molasses inside to ferment creating additional pressure. These factors, coupled with the lack of proper maintenance and safety, culminated in the tank's catastrophic failure. The fallout from the Great Molasses Flood was twofold. Firstly, Purity Distilling Company faced immense legal and financial consequences. Multiple lawsuits were filed against the company, ultimately resulting in a $600,000 settlement, equivalent to over $9 million today, to the victims and their families. This massive financial burden severely impacted the company's bottom line. And secondly, the disaster tarnished the reputation of the United States Industrial Alcohol Company. It brought national attention to the need for improved industrial safety standards and led to an increase in scrutiny of large corporations and their safety practices. Number 9. Manhattan Parking Garage on a fateful Tuesday in 2023, a New York City parking garage in Lower Manhattan succumbed to a catastrophic collapse. Initial findings suggest that a combination of age and an excess load on the roof played pivotal roles in this devastating failure, resulting in devastating consequences. Preliminary investigation shed light on the factors that contributed to the severity of this collapse. The age of the building, nearly a century old, combined with the undue weight placed on its roof, proved to be the deadly recipe that led to this engineering nightmare. The Ann Street Building, originally erected in 1925, had seen a long history of use. City records indicated certification of occupancy dating back to January 1926. 
A subsequent certification issued in 1957 permitted the presence of, quote, more than five motor vehicles on the cellar and on the first three stories, specifying that the roof was suitable for passenger car-type vehicles exclusively. Records revealed that the building had prior open violations, including one dating back to November 2003, which was deemed hazardous. The violation pointed out issues such as first floor ceiling slab cracks and defective concrete with exposed rear cracks. A hearing was scheduled for 2004, but the matter remained unresolved. In 2019, a work permit was granted for the building to undertake electrical work necessary for accommodating general wiring requiring for car charging equipment. In 2023, the sheer magnitude of the cars parked on top of the structure, and estimated to be around 80 to 90 vehicles, might have pushed the limits beyond what the 100-year-old building could withstand. The cumulative weight amounting to as much as a staggering quarter million pounds is being explored as a potential catalyst for this catastrophe. Number 8. The John Hancock Tower the John Hancock Tower, officially known as 200 Clarendon Street, was designed by the celebrated architect I.M. Pei and completed in 1976. This skyscraper, standing at 60 stories and 790 feet tall, was envisioned as a modern masterpiece featuring an all-glass curtain wall that gave it a distinctively reflective exterior. However, shortly after its completion, Bostonians were confronted with a terrifying problem. Large, heavy glass panes began to spontaneously detach from the building's facade and plummet to the ground. This phenomenon, known as glass falling, became a grave safety concern for pedestrians and property. The root cause of the glass falling was a complex interplay of factors, including the thermal expansion and contraction of the building's glass panels. The tower's curtain wall was designed to allow for slight movement, but the extreme temperature fluctuations in Boston's climate caused the glass to expand and contract beyond what the original design had anticipated. The crisis reached its peak in the winter months when cold weather caused the glass to contract significantly. As a result, entire panels dislodged from their frames, posing a threat to everyone below. In one instance, a 500-pound glass pane crashed to the ground. To address this perilous situation, a team of engineers and architects embarked on a mission to find a solution that would prevent this from happening. Their approach involved installing a zipper gasket system, which allowed for the controlled movement of these glass panels while remaining securely attached. The retrofitting process was a massive undertaking, involving the removal and reinstallation of thousands of glass panes. It was a costly and time-consuming endeavor, but ultimately proved successful in resolving this glass-falling problem. Moving on to number 7, the Bhopal Disaster. The Bhopal Disaster, one of the most catastrophic industrial accidents in history, unfolded on the night of December 2nd and 3rd, 1984, in the city of Bhopal in India. This disaster had an impact on the lives of thousands. At the heart of this was the Union Carbide India Limited pesticide plant, which was responsible for manufacturing a pesticide called methyl iocyanate. The plant was designed with several safety measures in place, but systematic negligence, cost-cutting, and inadequate maintenance ultimately set the stage for tragedy. The disaster was triggered by a combination of factors, including significant water ingress into a storage tank containing 42 tons of methyl iocyanate. The plant's refrigeration system, designed to keep the volatile chemical stable, had been turned off to save money. This, combined with subpar safety and lack of employee training, created a time bomb. In the dead of night, a runaway chemical reaction happened, raising the temperature and pressure within the storage tank to dangerous levels. The safety systems failed, and a toxic cloud of mic gas was released into the atmosphere. The consequences were catastrophic. The toxic gas cloud, heavier than air, settled over the city of Bhopal, where thousands of people were asleep in their homes. The effects were immediate and devastating. People woke up choking, with burning eyes and throats, struggling to breathe. Panic and chaos ensued as the city's overwhelmed hospitals were flooded with victims. The disaster prompted international outrage and led to legal battles that spanned decades. Union Carbide, the American company that owned the plant, faced significant legal and financial consequences. However, the aftermath of the disaster also revealed the inadequacies of industrial safety regulations and corporate responsibility in both India and the United States. Number 6. The Beauvais Cathedral The history of the Beauvais Cathedral is one of soaring aspirations that reached for the heavens quite literally. Construction of this grand cathedral began in the late 13th century with the intent to outshine all other cathedrals of its era. The architects and builders aimed for nothing less than the tallest vault ever created, a true marvel of Gothic architecture. 
However, the ambitious height of the Beauvais Cathedral posed some engineering challenge that proved to be insurmountable with the technology and knowledge available at the time. The soaring choir vaults, which reached a staggering 157 feet in height, surpassed the structural limits of the materials and construction techniques of the day. The cathedral experienced multiple collapses during construction, further compounded by financial constraints and political turmoil of the period. The result was a truncated cathedral, forever incomplete. Instead of soaring spires and vaulted ceilings as initially envisioned, visitors to the Beauvais Cathedral today encounter a choir that abruptly ends in the open air, with significant pieces missing. The cathedral's unfinished state is a stark reminder of the engineering challenges faced by its builders. Its architectural design has also placed an extraordinary burden on its upkeep. The immense height of the choir vaults in particular, subject to the structure to constant stress from wind and environmental factors, over the centuries extensive maintenance efforts have been required to ensure the stability. One of the most notable maintenance projects took place in the 18th century, when a wooden framework, often referred to as the forest, was installed within the cathedral to support the choir vaults. This intricate network of timber acted as a reinforcement to counteract the lateral forces and potential collapse. Even today, the Beauvais Cathedral requires ongoing restoration and maintenance efforts to preserve its integrity. Number 5. Ariane 5 Flight 501 In the realm of space exploration, few events have left as an indelible mark as the ill-fated Ariane 5 Flight 501. Launched on June 4, 1996 from the Guiana Space Center in Kourou, French Guiana, this mission was intended to mark a significant milestone for the European Space Agency and the aerospace industry as a whole. However, what began as a promising endeavor ultimately culminated in a catastrophic failure, exposing a critical mistake. Flight 501 was part of the ambitious Ariane 5 program, a series of missions aimed at establishing Europe as a major player in the space launch industry. The primary objective of this particular flight was to deploy four cluster scientific satellites designed for studying Earth's magnetosphere. The launch took place at 3.34 p.m. local time, and the initial liftoff and ascent appeared flawless. The rocket, a symbol of the European space prowess, soared majestically into the sky, buoyed by its immense thrust. However, tragedy struck just 40 seconds into the flight. A deviation in trajectory triggered the rocket's self-destruct mechanism, leading to a spectacular explosion and the disintegration of the vehicle. Debris from the ill-fated rocket rained down into the Atlantic Ocean. This disaster raised an array of questions. What went wrong and why? How could such a promising mission end in a fiery ruin? The answer lay in critical engineering mistakes, the reuse of software from the Ariane 4 program in the Ariane 5's guidance system. This was significantly more powerful and exhibited different flight characteristics compared to its predecessor. The reused software didn't account for those differences, leading to a fatal error in the rocket's inertial reference system. The inertial reference system, designed to measure the rocket's orientation during flight, encountered an overflow error. This happened because the software was coded in 64-bit floating-point format, while the actual data was in a 16-bit signed integer format. When the system attempted to convert the large 64-bit numbers into the smaller 16-bit format, data overflow happened, causing the rocket's onboard computer to shut down. The shutdown triggered the rocket's self-destruct mechanism, since it could no longer maintain proper control over the vehicle's trajectory. Number 4. The Mars Climate Orbiter the Mars Climate Orbiter was a key component of NASA's Mars Surveyor 98 program, designed to study the Martian atmosphere, climate, and surface. Launched on December 11, 1998 from Cape Canaveral Air Force Base in Florida, this spacecraft had a singular mission – to orbit Mars and collect data vital for understanding the planet's climate. The orbiter was equipped with a suite of scientific instruments and was tasked with providing invaluable information for future missions to Mars. However, despite the planning and expertise of NASA's JPL, the mission was doomed from the outset. The disaster unfolded on September 23, 1999 during the orbiter's arrival at Mars. The spacecraft was meant to enter orbit around the Red Planet, a maneuver requiring precise calculations and navigation. Tragically, the orbiter never achieved its intended orbit. Instead, it approached Mars at too low an altitude and ultimately disintegrated in the Martian atmosphere. The cause of this failure was rooted in a fundamental engineering mistake. It emerged that two different teams had employed conflicting units of measurement during the orbiter's construction and navigation. While the JPL team used the metric system, as is customary in scientific endeavors, Lockheed Martin, the spacecraft's manufacturer, utilized the Imperial system for its calculations. 
this unit mix-up had dire consequences. The navigational data provided to the orbiter was in Imperial units, while the onboard software interpreted this data as metric units. As a result, the spacecraft executed maneuvers based on these erroneous calculations. This tragic yet bonehead misalignment of units of measurement laid bare the paramount importance of precision in engineering, particularly in the context of interplanetary missions. The Mars Climate Orbiter, instead of enhancing our understanding of Martian climate, instead became a contributor of orbital pollution. The repercussions of this mishap extended beyond the immediate mission loss. It prompted a comprehensive review of NASA's practices and instigated a concerted effort to ensure that units of measurement were consistently applied across all phases of mission planning, development, and execution. Number 3. The Big Dig Collapse the Central Artery Tunnel Project, colloquially known as the Big Dig, was an ambitious and transformative infrastructure endeavor in the city of Boston, Massachusetts. Intended to alleviate chronic traffic congestion, improve transportation efficiency, and reshape the urban landscape, this project was conceived to be a crowning achievement of civil engineering. However, from its inception, it was plagued by delays, cost overruns, and ultimately, a catastrophic collapse rooted in engineering flaws. The Big Dig had its origins in the mid-20th century, when the elevated central artery, an elevated highway, became a symbol of urban decay and inefficiency. In 1982, construction finally started, aiming to replace the elevated artery with an underground tunnel system. The project was envisioned as a solution to Boston's chronic traffic woes and a means to reconnect the city with its waterfront. Yet, from its outset, the Big Dig faced innumerable challenges. The ambitious undertaking was fraught with mismanagement, soaring budgets, and missed deadlines. What was intended to be a seven-year, $2.8 billion project eventually stretched to over two decades and cost an astonishing $22 billion. The catastrophe happened on July 10, 2006, when a section of the Big Dig Tunnel ceiling collapsed, crushing a car and claiming the life of a woman. The tragedy sent shockwaves through the city, and it raised questions about the integrity of the entire project. The root cause of the collapse lay in a series of engineering errors that dated back to the project's early phases. The tunnel's design featured massive ceiling panels, each weighing up to three tons, held in place by a system of epoxy bolts and anchors. Now, these epoxy fasteners were intended to secure the ceiling panels to the tunnel's concrete structure. However, the epoxy used in the fasteners was found to be inadequate for the task. It wasn't capable of withstanding the sustained vibrations and stresses imposed on the tunnel. Over time, the epoxy began to weaken and the fasteners gradually deteriorated, leaving the ceiling panels vulnerable. On the fateful night of the collapse, a combination of factors conspired to trigger the disaster. Leaking water infiltrated the tunnel, contaminating the epoxy fasteners and further compromising their integrity. As a result, several ceiling panels detached and fell, one of them crushing the passing vehicle. This collapse exposed a fundamental engineering flaw in the Big Dig's construction. It was a grim reminder of the consequences of cutting corners, inadequate quality control, and a lack of rigorous oversight. This tragedy raised profound questions about the safety and durability of the entire tunnel system. Number 2. Deepwater Horizon Oil Spill the Deepwater Horizon oil spill, one of the most devastating environmental disasters in modern history, serves as a reminder of the perilous consequences that can happen from a combination of engineering misjudgments, inadequate safety measurements, and operational errors. This catastrophic event unfolded as an offshore drilling rig bore the brunt of a perfect storm of calamities, leaving a lasting mark on the Gulf of Mexico and raising questions about the state of industrial and environmental responsibility. The Deepwater Horizon was an advanced offshore drilling rig, renowned for its cutting-edge tech and deep-sea drilling capability. It's owned by Transocean and leased by BP. It was positioned over the Macondo Prospect, an oil reservoir located beneath the Gulf of Mexico, in April of 2010. The rig's mission was to tap into this reservoir and extract valuable oil. However, from the get-go, the Deepwater Horizon project was beset with difficulties and delays. As the drilling operation reached its critical phase, engineers encountered multiple challenges in maintaining control over the well. High-pressure pockets of hydrocarbons posed a significant risk, and the rig's blowout preventer, a crucial safety device, failed to function as intended. The catastrophic events of April 20, 2010 unfolded when a massive explosion ripped through the rig. Tragically, 11 workers lost their lives, and a colossal blowout initiated an uncontrolled release of oil into the Gulf of Mexico. This devastating spill would become the largest marine oil spill in history. 
The causes of the Deepwater Horizon disaster lay in a complex web of engineering miscalculations and operational lapses. The blowout preventer, designed to seal the well in the event of a blowout, failed due to a combination of design flaws, insufficient maintenance, and inadequate testing. The well's cementing process was also flawed, with insufficient cement coverage that allowed hydrocarbons to escape. The decision to disregard a critical safety test known as a negative pressure test proved to be catastrophic. This test, designed to detect potential issues with well integrity, was misinterpreted and the results were dismissed. This error resulted in a failure to recognize the impending blowout. As the oil gushed uncontrollably into the Gulf, the ecological and economic toll was immeasurable. Coastal communities were devastated, marine life faced dire consequences, and the fragile Gulf ecosystem was irrevocably altered. The Deepwater Horizon oil spill, more commonly referred to as the BP oil spill, spurred unprecedented efforts to mitigate the environmental and economic damage. A massive cleanup operation was launched, and BP faced legal repercussions, including substantial fines and settlements. Number 1. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, a slender span that once arched gracefully across the Tacoma Narrows Strait in Washington State, has earned its place in history as one of the most iconic engineering mishaps. This ill-fated structure, both a marvel of design and a testament to the consequences of oversight, continues to serve as a cautionary tale of engineering innovation gone awry. The tale of the bridge begins in the early 1940s when a groundbreaking suspension bridge was envisioned to link Tacoma and the Kitsap Peninsula. With its sweeping curves and a remarkable main span of 2,800 feet, this bridge was intended to revolutionize transportation in the region. Construction commenced in 1938, and by July of 1940, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge stood as an engineering marvel poised to redefine modern infrastructure. However, on the windy morning of November 7, 1940, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge would become synonymous with disaster. In the span of just a few hours, the fate of this magnificent structure unraveled. Winds that day reached speeds of 40 miles an hour, creating a phenomenon known as aeroelastic flutter, a destructive vibration caused by the interaction between the bridge's natural frequency and the wind's forces. As the wind buffeted the bridge, it began to oscillate violently. The center span constructed with narrow and shallow girders proved susceptible to those forces. The bridge twisted and contorted in ways unforeseen by its designers, creating an eerie, undulating motion that no bridge should ever be making. The catastrophic collapse of the bridge captured in photographs and newsreels remains an indelible image in engineering history. At approximately 11 a.m. on that fateful day, a massive section of the bridge's center span broke free and plummeted into the narrow strait. Astonishingly, there were no casualties, but the bridge's demise marked a costly and dramatic engineering failure. The ultimate cause of this collapse lay in a series of design flaws. The bridge's slender profile, coupled with the shallow depth of its girders, made it susceptible to aerodynamic forces. The aerodynamic flutter triggered by the strong winds pushed the bridge beyond its limits. These aerodynamic phenomena compounded by the bridge's natural frequency led to its demise. The aftermath of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge collapse was a sobering period of reflection for engineers and the broader public. It prompted re-evaluation of engineering principles, particularly those related to the aerodynamic stability of suspension bridges. Lessons learned from this failure would inform subsequent designs and safety protocols in the field of civil engineering. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you to our channel members.